Hey, good afternoon. Today's Bible study is coming out of Matthew chapter 15, verses 21 through 28. And I am reading them from my NIV Bible, and it reads as follows. Leaving that place, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from the vicinity came to him, crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon-possessed and suffering terribly. Jesus did not answer a word, so his disciples came to him and urged him, Send her away, for she keeps crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. The woman came and knelt before him, Lord, help me, she said. He replied, It is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Yes, it is, Lord, she said. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus said to her, Woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And her daughter was healed at that moment. Amen. Well, when we look at this, um, in the first verse, the 21st verse, it says, Leaving that place, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. Well, Jesus was probably trying to conceal himself again or get away from the crowd or perhaps um, even avoid Herod. Um, and if you look at Mark 7, 24, it says, Jesus got up and went away from there to the region of Tyre. And when he had entered a house, he wanted no one to know of it, yet he could not escape to notice. The other thing is, remember, Jesus had these crowds following him, too, and he was trying to get some peace, get somewhere and just be there. So in 15, 22, it says, a Canaanite woman and from the vicinity came to him crying out, Lord, Son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon-possessed and suffering terribly. Now, remember that Tyre and Sidon was a Canaanite possession back in that time. Um, and all these people were different descendants from um, the Canaanites, which included Tyre and Sidon, which was also called Phoenicia, don't forget. So... She was probably speaking some Greek to Jesus, and Jesus was understanding her. She was, by birth, um, born in the country, and she was a Canaanite. Um, she said, thou son of David, and this meant the descendant of David. Um, you can see that in Matthew 1.1. 1, 1. But the phrase truly here means the Messiah, so she must have had some knowledge of who Christ was. And she says her daughter is with this devil and it's treating her terribly. And you can hear it at the end of she said she is my daughter is demon possessed and suffering terribly. She was vexed with this devil, this possession. And like I said before, we do have to know that the devil has his minions also. Um, so if you look at Matthew 424, the news about him spread throughout all Syria. And they brought to him all who were ill, those suffering with various diseases and pains and demonics and epileptics, paralytics, and he healed them. So she must have heard about him and must have gained some kind of faith in who Jesus was because she came to him about her daughter. She didn't come to her about come to him about herself. She actually came about her daughter when she she, she says it. She came and her, she tells, have mercy on me, my daughter. My daughter. She wanted mercy on her before her daughter. The woman showed her great earnestness. She loved her child as we all would. She cried out to him and fell at Jesus' feet. If you look at Mark 7, 25, but after hearing of him, a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately came and fell at his feet. So in verse 23, Jesus said to her, nothing, not a thing. It says, but Jesus did not answer a word. So his disciples came to him and urged him, send her away, for she keeps crying out after us. Well, Jesus was testing her faith. The woman came up and she cried to him, but Jesus didn't say anything. He tested her faith. And it might have shown the apostles an example of the effect of preserving supplication. 
that and it it wasn't that Jesus was unwilling to aid her, nor did he neglect her. It was to give her strength in her faith. It was proper that the strength of her faith should be fully tried. He tried everybody's faith. Look at it. Everybody's faith was tried, and everybody thinks he was wrong when he didn't say anything, but he really was trying her faith. So in Matthew 15, 24, he says, He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. This was made to the woman. This answer was stated to the woman, not to the disciples. And remember, the lost sheep of the house of Israel were the Jews. And we all know that he came first for them. And it had been spoken. He came as their Messiah. He came to preach the gospel to them about himself to the Jews only. And then later it, it got preached to the Gentiles. But the ministry of Jesus was confined almost entirely to the Jews. And you can even see where he tells the disciples not to speak to the Gentiles. And you can read that. Um, but then um, in Matthew 15, 25, the woman came up and knelt before the Lord. Help me, she said. So what does she do? She came and worshipped. That is, she bowed down before him, gave him reverence. Could you imagine if you didn't know who he was and you came up and bowed down? See, she must have known who the Lord was, and she must have had faith because even with him not saying anything, she bowed down and still gave him reverence. She had a knowledge of who was in her presence, unlike the Pharisees, and she gave him reverence and she worshipped him. She told him, Lord, help me. Isn't that what all sinners say? Lord, help me. If you know God and you repent, you say, Lord, help me. And you can say it in any form you want to. Lord, this, that, 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 this. You are actually saying, Lord, help me. I need your help. And that's what she did. And it was a proper cry for a sinner who needs the help of the Lord. And we are all sinners. So guess what? When we crawl, when we call on the Lord, we are saying, Lord, help me. So in 1526, uh-oh, he replies, it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Now, people get this a little bit confused because they, they think of what he's but what he says, but it is not what they think he's saying. This is, and it is not appropriate or proper. Children's bread, which the Jews were considered themselves as a special children of God. To all other nations that were accustomed to apply terms of contempt of which dogs was the most common. And you can see that in many of um, the countries now, Muslims even still do it, still apply the term dogs to Christians and Christians and Jews to each other. It's an expression of contempt, the highest contempt. What the Savior was saying that he was sent to the Jews. The woman was a Gentile. He meant merely using a term in common vernacular, as something that was common to them that they used. As I said, they used it. But once again, it was designed to test her faith in the strongest manner because now, He's saying it to her, and it did not hurt her ministry. It did not make her leave, actually, which most of us, it would have made us leave. And it, it applies benefits intended for the Jews only. Under, evidently, he cannot be understood as intending to justify or Sanction the use of such terms or calling names. He meant to try her faith, as I said. He was trying her faith. And he tries us. We don't just get it because we ask for it. Think about how long suffering the Lord has been. And didn't you think you should get instant gratification because you have been unfaithful, but he has been faithful because he has been sinless and we have been sinners? It doesn't work that way. So... He said, I, you are a Gentile, I'm a Jew. The Jews called themselves the children of God. 
and they feel vilify and abuse these people and, and calling you a dog are you willing to receive from a Jew in a favor you were asking somebody that you didn't like to give you something from them and he asked her were you willing to receive this and then the real question is are you willing to submit to this to receive a favor from one of that nation of Jews and to acknowledge your dependence your dependence your dependence on a people that really didn't care for you somewhat would say despised you it was a trial of her faith he wasn't calling her anything that wasn't known at that time he wasn't degrading the lady in any way he was testing her faith and look she says yes it is Lord she said even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Let it be the best food that is given to the children. Let the Jews have the chief benefit of having Christ's ministry. But us beneath the table, we'll eat whatever falls off the table. As long as we get the same rewards that they get, we'll eat the crumbs that fall off the table. So I'll be a dog. I'll be a dog if I can receive the same thing. A pagan is unworthy of everything. Yet, I know that you have the almighty power and have displayed it among the Jews and have healed people. The despised daughter of a despised heathen mother, you can heal. I am not a Jew, but I know you have the power to heal me. So, in Matthew 15 and 28, it says, Then Jesus said to her, Woman, you have great faith. The whole time she should not, she did not walk away from the conversation with Christ, even when he was quiet, even when the dog was there. None of these times did she waver. She kept her faith strong. She knew who he was. So then it says, your request is granted. Uh-oh. You found favor from a Jew, and you are Canaanite, and you had faith. Uh-oh. Showing that Jesus did work for the Gentile also, and her daughter was healed at that moment. And it never states that her daughter was with her. Not once does it say, her daughter was with her. Matter of fact, a Canaanite woman from the vicinity came to him crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon possessed and suffering terribly. It never states that the daughter is with her. I think Jesus healed, for, healed from a distance again. The daughter was healed. He says, your request is granted and her daughter was healed at that moment. The word here seems to include also the humility and perseverance in this woman. Hey, I'm going to take anything I need to be with the Lord. And perseverance, <laughs> perseverance is one of the major things that Christians, disciples, followers of Christ have to have in order to be with Christ. And this manifested in this woman because the whole time, she, she did not waver. And, excuse me, and without her wavering, her faith had been tested and she had been rewarded for having faith in Christ. And then, when I said she hailed from a distance, well, I looked it up a little bit. If you go to Mark 7.30, because Mark's story tells you a little more detail, it says, and going back to her home, she found the child lying on the bed the deeming, demon having left. So like I said, the Lord healed from a distance just by faith. Just by this woman's faith and her perseverance. She didn't care what people thought. She knew who Jesus was. She didn't care what they said. She knew who Jesus was. She was not going to be taken away from there 
without letting the Lord know that she had faith in him. And she may not have been a Jew, but she was a Gentile, and she will accept anything that the Messiah would give to her. And as you know later on, thank God, the word got to the Gentiles. Amen.